Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First, I'd like to welcome our dear friend and brother, Ambassador Salwan al Rodan, the General Counsel of the State of Iraq in Los Angeles, with his wife, Honorable Wife. They drove two and a half hours to get to the mosque tonight. So you are most welcome. The community of Orange County, the Islamic Educational Center, the Mu'mineen, they welcome you. And we wish you, inshallah, you and all those who are observing the month of Ramadan and the fast, the best month, inshallah. We ask Allah to accept your deeds, your prayers, your supplications. These are the last 10 days are the most important during this month. And only a few nights are left and inshallah, Wednesday, April 10th is going to be the day of Eid, Eid al-Fitr al-Mubarak, inshallah. And we begin the prayers, the takbirat begins here at 7.45 a.m. And the prayers at 8 a.m. sharp, inshallah ta'ala. Wednesday, Wednesday, April 10th, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. والصلاة والسلام على أنبياء الله جميعا وعلى سيدهم وخاتمهم حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين سيما سيدنا ومولانا الإمام الحجة بن الحسن المهدي المنتظر عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن أنشأناهن إنشاء فجعلناهن أبكارا عربا أترابا لأصحاب اليمين ثلة من الأولين وثلة من الآخرين صدق الله العلي العظيم Since the beginning of the month of Ramadan we embarked on a series of sessions regarding the description of paradise in the Holy Quran. What does this book, our book says about paradise and how paradise being portrayed and described in this book. And hopefully, hopefully all of us, our final destination will be paradise, inshallah. After dedicating your deeds, your thoughts, your sayings to God during this month, fasting for Him, trying to be better observants, better believers, better followers of this religion, better followers of the Prophet ﷺ and his family, definitely will be forgiven. We will be forgiven, inshallah. And our final abode and destination is going to be paradise. So in the previous nights, we spoke about the food in paradise, the food, the drink, the dress, the jewelry, the homes, the mansions, the trees, the gardens. And tonight we're going to speak about something important. Tonight we're going to speak about marriage in paradise. Marriage is important. We cannot survive without marriage. So I have good news and bad news for you. Do you want me to begin with good news or bad news? Bad? No, it's the month of Ramadan. We have to begin with good news. The good news is that you're going to be stuck with your wife in paradise. So this wife that you have here and this husband that you have here is going to be with you in paradise. This is the good news. The bad news is you're going to have a choice. You're going to have a choice. If you'd love to stay with your wife and if both of you did well, both of you were in the same ranking, in the same level of faith, of commitment, then you may, if you, if both of you want, both of you, not just one of you, you may stay together, which I doubt you're going to do that. <laughs> Now, if one of them is better than the other, what will happen? 
if the wife, she did much better than her husband. And let's say both of them are in paradise, but not in the same level. You know, paradise, we're going to speak in one of the nights, darajatul jannah, the levels of paradise. So people are not sitting in the same compartment. There is first class, business class, economy class, you know, they do exist. So if they did not do exactly the same, are they still going to be together? Married? Huh? What do you think? Yes. If, if the one who does better than the other, be it a wife, be it a husband, says, please God, I want my spouse, my partner to be with me. Since she was with me for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years in this life, in the lower life, please, can you give her an upgrade? She might get, or he might get an upgrade, if they choose to, if they choose to. But if no, if the wife is fed up of this man, she said, listen, 50 years are more than enough for me. Please, leave me alone now. Leave me alone. I don't know whether they're going to do this or not. Only God knows. But there, remember, there in paradise, our brain, our reason, our aql, our personality is going to be perfected and integrated. So there is no room for selfishness. There is no room for uh, loving yourself and not loving others. There is no room for unhappiness or even hate in paradise. No room for these bad qualities. So they, they'll be given the option. Tonight, let me speak about women in paradise. And tomorrow, I promise you, I'll speak about men in paradise. Tomorrow, Friday. Tonight, we speak about Hurul Ain. Tomorrow, I promise I'm going to speak about Wildan al Mukhalladun. And both of them are mentioned in the Quran. And the dua we just recited, dua al iftitah, ومن الحور العين برحمتك فزوجنا ومن الولدان المخلدين كأنهم لؤلؤ مكنون فأخدمنا. So both are mentioned in the Quran. But tonight, let's speak about women. Now, if a man goes to paradise, how many types of women he can have? Seven? She says seven. <laughs> Two types. One, one are wives, his wife, his wife. Or if he had more than one, a wife, more than one here, if he had more than one. So he can have them in paradise as wives. And they are mentioned in the Quran. Hum wa azwajuhum. See, the Quran says, they going to enjoy paradise with their partners, means their partners here who were with them here. So here he can he can he can have a wife, a wife, zoja. But the plus zoja, the wife, he can has he can have what? What else? Hmm? We just mentioned a few minutes ago. Hurilin. We mentioned this. If they don't like their husbands, or the husband does not like the wife, they are separated. Free country. Free country. There is no obligation. Nobody is going to force you to do something that you don't like in paradise. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Say salawat. <clears throat> the second type of wives you can have are whom? So the first one is the human being who was with you here, your partner. But who's the second one? Hurul Ain. Ahsantum. Hurul Ain. What is the meaning of Hurul Ain? Hur is the plural of what? What is the singular? Singular of Hur. Hur is a plural. Jam. Huh? Hawra. Hawra. So Hawra is Hawra is singular and a plural is Hur. Hurul Ain. Why they are called Hur al Ain? Why they are called Hur al Ain? Because they are wide eyed. The eyes are big. And this is considered in some cultures, in many cultures, in fact, 
What is the most attractive part of a lady? Her eyes. What is the, the, the most important part which makes her really attractive and beautiful? Her eyes, definitely. Of course, some people have other preferences. But most people, they like wide eyes, big eyes, big black eyes. So this is why they are called Hurul Ain. They have big eyes. And they are mentioned in the Quran. Allah says, وَزَوَّجْنَاهُمْ بِحُورٍ عِينٍ In another verse, وَحُورٌ عِينٌ كَأَمْثَالِ اللُّؤْلُؤِ الْمَكْنُونَ Like the, the likeness of the pure pearl, pure, immaculate pearl, لُؤْلُؤِ الْمَكْنُونَ Now, men, they have حُورُ الْعِينٍ Do women have حُورُ الْعِينٍ too? No, they don't have Hur al Ain. There is no same sex marriage in paradise. No same sex marriage. So they have instead, they're going to have, we're going to speak about this. So hold your breath, ladies. We're going to speak about this tomorrow, inshallah, about Wildan al Mukhalladun. But you don't get Hur al Ain. You get Wildan al Mukhalladun there, inshallah. Okay. So those. Those Hurul Ain, Allah says about them, listen to what God, how He describes them. This is the description of the Quran. Fihinna khayratun hisan. Fihinna khayratun. Khayrat is a reference. Khayratul akhlaq, hisanul wujuh. A combination of two things, not just one. They are attractive, physically attractive, and they are morally, spiritually also attractive. Their manners is attractive too, not just, not just the face, not just the physical side, not just the body, but the manner, the akhlaq. And this is very important. One day the Prophet saw a man who was very, very handsome. He said to him, but his behavior was not good. His behavior did not match his appearance. His appearance is attractive, handsome. He said to him, listen, man. Allah Hassana Khulukak. Hassana Khalkak Falyahsun Khulukuk. God made you in a beautiful shape, attractive, handsome. So you have to take care of your manners too, your akhlaq also. He himself, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was the example of a man who was extremely handsome in his in his physical feature, he was handsome and also in his manners. Therefore, one of the du'as, Allahumma hassan khalqi wa khulqi. My creation, my appearance be presentable, beautiful, handsome, and also my manner, my attitude, my behavior, my relationship with people. And those who inherited the Prophet Muhammad in their in, in his beauty, in his handsomeness, was his grandson, Al-Imam Al-Hasan Al-Mushtaba alayhi salam. He resembled his grandfather, the Prophet. Another man in the family of the Prophet, Aliyun Al-Akbar, the son of Imam Hussein, was exactly the same like his grandfather, the Prophet, in his creation, in his resemblance, in his physical feature, and also in his manners. Ashbahun nasi khalqan, when the Prophet died in Medina and people missed the Prophet, those who saw the Prophet, and now they are missing him, they would come to the house of Imam Hussein to have a look at his son, Ali al Akbar, because he resembled his grandfather, the Prophet. So God says, Those women of paradise, they are attractive, physically attractive. And also morally and mentally, their behavior is attractive. And my friends, let me tell you something. Sometimes I see people getting divorced and the wife is super, super, super attractive. And I say to myself, why this crazy man divorcing this super attractive, a beautiful lady? She's a beauty queen. What's wrong with him? 
Then I discover after a few minutes that she does not have akhlaq. This is why he cannot stay with her. Same thing with men. When men bring me the most handsome man, but he's devoid of good manners, the wife is not interested in him. She doesn't look at him as being someone handsome. She looks at him as being someone very ugly. Therefore, there is no attraction. What keeps the attraction, it's true that physical beauty is important, but what is more important is the inner beauty. The inner beauty between people. This is what keeps people together. This is why our book says, In another verse, Allah says, their manner is also good. وَلَهُمْ فِيهَا أَزْوَاجٌ مُطَهَّرَةٌ Purified. In their manners, they are purified. In, man, in their manners, they are purified. Excellent in their manners. وَلَهُمْ فِيهَا أَزْوَاجٌ مُطَهَّرَةٌ وَهُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Then in Surah Al-Waqi'ah, Allah says about Hur al Listen to the description. إِنَّا أَنْشَأْنَاهُنَّ إِنْشَاءً Truly we brought them in the best creation. أَنْشَأْنَاهُنَّ إِنْشَاءً We worked on them carefully. Have you seen sometimes they sell you a watch, they say this is handmade. Why the Swiss watches are expensive? Some of them are expensive, like Rolex. Why it is too expensive? Because it's handmade. Why the Rolls Royce car is too expensive? $200,000, $300,000. Who has a Rolls Royce here? Raise your hand. No one? Inshallah, you'll have. If not here in Jannah, inshallah, in paradise. So, why it is too expensive? Why it is too expensive? Because it's handmade. It's handmade. The factory in England, they make only a handful of cars. A handful because it's handmade. God says about the women of paradise, they are handmade. This is, of course, a metaphor. Not literal, a metaphor. <inaudible> we created them very well in a perfect shape. In sha'an, in a perfect shape. <inaudible> we made them what? Abkara, unused. Brand new, brand new. Have you seen when you ride a brand new car, the smell versus the one you get from the auction? It's a big difference. So brand new, unused. فَجَعَلْنَاهُنَّ أَبْكَارًا عُرُبًا What does عُرُبًا mean? عُرُب is a plural of عَرُوب. عَرُوب, singular. Plural, عُرُبًا. Urban is not Arab and huh? Arab means Arab people. Has nothing to do with Arab, huh? Nothing to do with Arab and Ajam here. Urban, the singular is Arub. What is Arub? What's the meaning of Arub? How do you read Surah Al Waqa and you don't understand it? You must understand it. No, Virgin is the first one. Virgin, we mentioned. But Arub is something else. Hmm? No, no, no. Never touched is, vir is virgin, which is, which is abkara. Arub al mutahabibatu ila zawjiha, the one which is beloved and, and she's so attractive to her husband. So attractive to her husband. She has a sense of a humor, she's a smiling. Some women are beautiful, but they don't smile, they frown. The husband is not going to like them. Always begin your day when you open your eyes in the morning, if you are in the same room with your husband, in the same bed, with a smile. Don't frown, with a smile. Greet your spouse with a smile. If you want your day to be a, a fabulous day, to enjoy that day, begin your day with a smile. With a smile, with sense of a humor. Our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had sense of a humor. Whenever the Prophet traveled outside Medina with his companions, with his com company, he will make jokes because he wants people to be happy. The Prophet himself, he makes jokes. He had sense of a humor. You have to have sense of a humor. Don't frown. Please don't frown. And if you want to frown, frown outside, not inside the house. 
take all your anger outside and come home with a smile on your face. So Arub means the one who is beloved and attracted to her husband. To her husband. She has a sense of a humor. She's always smiling, always happy. She's not exhausted or tired. By the way, in paradise, no one is going to get tired. God says there is no nasab. In paradise, no nasab. Nasab means tired. We get tired. When you fast, you get tired. When you work, you get tired. When you don't sleep, you have lack of sleep, you get tired. But in paradise, you don't get tired. You are always energetic, always optimistic, always happy. So this is, inna ansha'nahunna insha'an faja'annahunna abkaran. Uruban atraba. What's the meaning of atraba? Are you someone Googling it? You cannot Google it, I promise you. You cannot find it. Atrab. What is atrab? Atrab, it means young age. So you don't get a wife of 70 or 80 or 90 years old there. You don't. Neither a wife gets a husband who's old cranky, he has to walk on the, you know, no. So you enter paradise fresh and young, inshallah, all of you, men and women, all people of paradise are healthy. They have perfect mental health, perfect physical health. They, they walk on their feet. They are athletic. They are strong. They are healthy, inshallah. So this is atraba. Atraba means the same age. There is no one in his 40 years old and the other one is 20. No, all the people of paradise, they are fixed at certain age. Some sources say that age is what? 33. I don't know about that. There is a hadith. Says people in paradise, all of them, the entire population of paradise are 33 and they're going to remain 33. There is no aging. Atraba. Atraba means all those women, same age. Because if you marry... Women with different ages, there are going to be a conflict. The younger is going to say, I am, you know, I am the youngest. You have to stay longer with me. So they are, there is equality, inshallah. Equal opportunity in paradise. Equal opportunity. Uruban, atraban, those li ashab al yameen. Those women are the, for the people of, people of the right. Li ashab al yameen, thullatum min al awaleen. وَثُلَّةٌ مِنَ الْآخَرِينَ In Surah Al-Rahman, Allah says about Hur al uh, breathtaking description. He says, كَأَنَّهُنَّ الْيَاقُوتُ وَالْمَرْجَانِ They are like ruby, Yaqut is ruby, in its purity, so pure. وَالْمَرْجَانِ coral in its what? Brightness. So they are so transparent, so immaculate, so pure, like Yaqut, Ruby, and they are so bright and shining, like Marjan, coral. Another description in Surah Al Safat. And theirs, the believers, shall be maidens. Of modest gaze, قاصرات الطرف. Modest gaze. What does it mean? Modest gaze. Those women in paradise, they have modest gaze, modest look. Exactly. They only look at their husbands. They are not interested. They are not interested in other men. They are programmed in a way. That the only man she loves, she adores, is her husband. She's not loyal to someone else. The only man th she thinks about is her husband. وَعِنْدَهُنَّ قَاصِرَاتُ الطَّرْفِعِينَ Ain means with shining eyes, with lustrous eyes. Her only interest is her husband. And this is repeated in the Quran in so many places. Hurun maqsuratun in Surat Al Rahman. When you read Quran in Ramadan, reflect on this. Reflect on these sentences. Hurun maqsuratun fil khiyam. Huris, women who are what? 
secluded, maqsurat, secluded in the pavilions. Secluded means her interest is only in her husband. She doesn't even think about someone else. Whereas in the dunya, they might think of someone else. When they see an actor on the television, in the television or in the movie theater, they might desire someone else. Especially if the husband is, you know, has no hair and, you know, whatever and whatever. And she sees this man in front of her. But there they have been programmed in a way that they only desire their husbands. And the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Taqulu li zawjiha, the wife says to her husband, by the way, trust me, tomorrow I'm going to tell you about Wildan al mukhalladun So don't haste, يعني. have some patience. I promise you, I promise you we implement justice here. So taqulu li zawjiha, the wife is going to tell her husband, ma ara shay'an fil jannati ahsanu mink. There is nothing in paradise better than you, more handsome than you, more perfect than you. Does the wife say to her husband this sentence here in this life? Huh? Never ever. Never ever. Maybe the first day of wedding when they are in the honeymoon only and then it expires forever. But in paradise she would say to her husband, you are the best. In her eyes, you are the best. And then in Surah Al-Rahman Allah says, لَمْ يَطْمِثْهُنَّ إِنْسٌ قَبْلَهُمْ وَلَا جَانٌ they are women of paradise as yet, as yet they are untouched as yet by any human or any jinn. Any human or any jinn, nobody touched them. Brand new. Now why does Quran say jinn? Human we understand, human he touches, you know, they have desire. Men and women they have desire, but why the Quran says لَمْ يَطْمِثْهُنَّ إِنْسٌ قَبْلَهُمْ إِنْسْ human وَلَا جَان Even jinn, they do not touch them. Why does the Quran say this? There is a reason. What is the reason? Hmm? Because in some schools of thought, not the Imami, not the Ja'fari, not the Ahl al-Bayt school of thought, in other school of thoughts, like the school, the Hanafi school of Abu Hanifa ibn Nu'man, Nu'man ibn Thabit. He believes, Abu Hanifa, that sometimes a, a, a wife, a, a lady can be, can get pregnant while her husband is absent. How? He's traveling. He's 10,000 miles away. How did she get pregnant? He says, maybe by jinn. It happens by jinn. But we do not subscribe to this tradition. No, we don't believe in that. So if one day, God forbids, a wife tells her husband that, listen, I'm pregnant, and the jinn, he did this, do not believe her. <laughs> do not believe. They don't do that. لَمْ يَطْمِثْهُنَّ إِنْسٌ قَبْلَهُمْ وَلَا جَانٌ Another verse, and we conclude, inshallah. In Surah Yasin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ الْيَوْمَ فِي شُغُلٍ فَاكِهُونَ يَا لَهْوِي فِي شُغُلٍ فَاكِهُونَ You have to go and read the translation of this. They are, they are having joy, having joy, busy having joy. And this joy could be sensual, sensual, physical, and you know what, what it means? And it could be also spiritual and mental. There are different joys, different levels of joy in paradise and pleasure. Sometimes it is sensual. We spoke about Rihul Jannah last night here. In paradise, there is a special fragrance, special aroma, unique. Farawhun wa Raihanun wa Jannatu Naim. Raihan is the special aroma, special fragrance, special scent of paradise. So people enjoy it when there is a special scent. This is why people spend so much money on perfumes. Perfumes are expensive. Why? Because it infuses you, infuses you with joy. It changes your mood. 
changes your mood. And this is why I said last night, in Ramadan, especially in Ramadan, it is highly recommended that you wear perfume. And you must wear it not just for the outsiders, for the insiders, for your family, for your husband, for your wife, for, for yourself. Even if you are alone at home, wear perfume. Wake up in the morning, wear perfume. 24-7. When you begin, it's mustahab when you stand for the salat. Not, not necessarily in the, in the mosque. At home, by yourself, in your room, wear perfume. Ta'attar. This is the sunnah. The tradition of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet kana yunfiqu ala tib akthar mimma yunfiqu ala ta'am. He would spend money on perfume more than spending money on food. This is the tradition of our leader. So why Muslims are not following him? Why they are not following him? Follow the tradition of the Prophet. So fi shughulin faqihun. They are busy rejoicing. Fakihun from tafakkuh. Tafakkuh means, means sense of a humor, sense of happiness, sense of joy, rejoicing. So this is the meaning of it. Fi shogalin fakihun. Hum wa azwajuhum fi zilalin ala al-araiki muttakiun. There is a point here. In paradise, you are not lonely. You cannot go to paradise and say, I want to be single. Leave me alone. Leave me alone, you say it here. Why? Because you are tired of people around you. When you get tired of people around you, you want to be alone by yourself. Because people are bothering you here. People are too much sometimes. So you'd rather be alone. But in paradise, people are not too much. Nobody is going to annoy you. Nobody is going to harass you. Nobody is going to intrude on your privacy. So you don't say, leave me alone. There is no reason. In paradise, exactly opposite of this life. In paradise, you want to be around others. You love to be around others. Them and their partners are sitting in shades. Reclining on couches. And watching Super Bowl, probably. I don't know what they watch. God knows what type of a sport. One night we have to speak about sport in paradise. I like soccer. My, my favorite you know, sport is, huh? Soccer too? Inshallah, inshallah. With Manchester City there, inshallah. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Al-Bayhaqi, one of the narrators of hadith, he says, Hur al they are made of saffron. Imagine, your wife is made of saffron. She smells good, she looks good, the color is good, the scent is good, the taste is good, everything in her. How much is saffron here when you buy a little bit of saffron? Saffron, how much is it? Too expensive. Too expensive. So your wife, Hurul Ain, is made of saffron, inshallah. Tomorrow we will see. What your husband is made of in paradise, inshallah. Wait until tomorrow. And last but not least, my friends, the relationship between the mu'min, the believer in paradise, with his wife, with his spouse, or she, a believing woman, with her husband, is not only physical or sexual or lustful, it's mostly mental and spiritual. You're going to enjoy the conversation with them. Here, sometimes people, they don't get along well. They don't want to speak to each other. The conversation, either toxic, toxic, or futile, or boring. But in paradise, no one is going to speak nonsense in paradise. لا يسمعون فيها لغوا ولا تأثيما. No لغو, no futile talk, no bad, no hurting talk. Everything you're going to hear, whether from your wife, your son, your neighbor, your friends, your community there in paradise, is excellent, is inspiring, is beautiful, is encouraging. And this is how marriage should be even in this life. God says in chapter 30, we read chapter 30 on Laylatul Qadr. Remember Surah Al-Rum? 
Remember Surah Al-Rum when we were reading it two nights ago? وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا Among your Lord's signs is that He created for your spouses. From among your own selves, it means they are human. So you find happiness, لِتَسْكُنُوا You find shelter. You find refuge. You find peace. لِتَسْكُنُوا Second, second. Amazing. This word is amazing. God uses fantastic words in the Quran. Second. Second has, has so many meanings. Second in Arabic is residence. But not only physical residence, spiritual and mental residence. You enjoy your residence, don't you? When you travel, even if you stay in the best hotels, you miss your home. You miss your bedroom. You want to go back home. Home is sweet home. Why? Because you enjoy it. So God says your wife is not a physical, not only a physical shelter for you. She's a mental and psychological shelter too. When you look at your wife, you get inspired. You get happy. You forget your pain. When the, husband, when the wife looks at her husband and she speaks to him, she finds peace. Do we have this in our marriages nowadays? I don't know. I really don't know. It worries me that the rate of divorce, the disintegration of the families worries me a lot. Worries me. I'm not worried by Israel. Israel is going to go one day. Israel is going to end. Because God promised us that the aggressor, the volume, the wrongdoer maybe lives for certain decades. But at the end, وَقُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقُّ وَزَهَقَ الْبَاطِلِ Falsehood is going to collapse. So I'm not worried about that. It's going to go. I am worried about the conflict in the community between the believers, the Muslims, the mu'mins. I am worried about the rate of divorce. When we do not think about our kids, the fate of our kids, when we put ourselves before our kids and we go to the court and petition for divorce and we don't listen to anyone. That should not happen. And that would not happen in paradise. Definitely in paradise, there is no separation and there is no divorce. Many things are not found in paradise. One of them is divorce. What is the other thing? It's not found in, the, in, in, in paradise. Death, ahsant, no death. What is the third one? Sickness. What is the fourth one? Suffering. And pain. What is the fifth one? The worries. When you are worried about your son, your mortgage, your payment, your car, your, there, are, there are no, no worries. And what else? This is good for women. They're going to enjoy this, believe me. What else they don't do in paradise? Women don't do. They don't do dishes, definitely. They don't do dishes, <laughs> definitely. But something else they don't do in paradise. No hijab in paradise. Sallu ala Muhammad wa al Muhammad. No hijab. Why? Because men there, strangers, are not going to gaze at you. Why he's not going to gaze at you? Because mashallah, he has a plenty. He has a plenty at home. And there is no more greed. No more greed to desire others. It is a greed that makes us desire others while we have the same food we have at, at home that we desire. Others. This is a part of a greed. greed. This is some defect in us. We are not perfect. We are human beings. We have deficiencies, shortcomings, defects, and this is one of them. In paradise, there is no more defects. People are perfected, perfected. Kamilin, insanun kamil, kamil, perfected. So there is no, uh, no reason for women, not for others to wear hijab. There is no. Do we have salat and siyam, fasting and prayers in paradise? No more prayers. So how do you speak to God? Ahsanti. Ahsanti, tasbihat. In paradise, our salat is going to be verbal. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallah. We glorify and we sanctify God. Inshallah, only a few years and you will see this with your eyes. So be hopeful.
This life is too short. Inshallah we go, inshallah. When you do good, and also when you love Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib and follow him. Because the Prophet himself, he says, the Prophet, this is the hadith of our noble Prophet, and this hadith is written in Sunni sources, Sunni sources. لا يجوز الصراط يوم القيامة إلا من كان بيده صك من علي بن أبي طالب. The visa officer, there is a visa officer on the day of judgment, and that visa officer who issues the visa for paradise is a man called علي بن أبي طالب. He has to sign your visa. As Ambassador Salwan, he signs the visas here when you go to Karbala. He gives you the visa for Iraq. Imam Ali does this to enter paradise. So when you do good, your intention is good, your deed is good, and you love the Prophet, and you love Amir al-Mu'mineen, and you walk on his path, paradise is guaranteed, inshallah. Allahumma khfir lil mu'mineen wal mu'minat. Tomorrow, Salatul Fajr is about 5.30, inshallah, here. Salatul Jama'ah Fajr. And then Salatul Jumu'ah is 1 p.m., and tomorrow is, what day is tomorrow? Yawm al-Quds, the final Friday, the last Friday of the month of Ramadan is the day of Jerusalem dedicated to Palestine and Jerusalem. So try to make it at 1 p.m. inshallah sharp. We begin Salatul Jum'ah here. And the program in the evening begins at 7.28 with Salatul Maghrib and Iftar, Friday night and Saturday night. And then... Uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we don't have iftar, but we have a program. We begin with dua al-iftitah, and inshallah, Wednesday is salatul eid, inshallah. Allahumma khfar lil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat, al-ahya'i minhum wal ammat, tabi'i allahumma baynana wa baynahum bil khayrat, innaka mujibu al-da'awat, allahumma taqabbal minna salatana, wa siyamana, wa dua'ana, wa qur'anana, wa tahajjudana fi hadha al-shahr al-azim, واجعلنا من عتقائك من النار وأدخلنا الجنة ومن على مرضانا بالشفاء والعافية ومن على إخوتنا في غزة وفلسطين ولبنان بالنصر يا أرحم الراحمين على أعدائهم الغاشمين وعجل في فرج إمامنا وسيدنا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح شهداء غزة وفلسطين ولبنان ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد